QuickBooks Online 2024 Bank Reconciliation Reports Month Number 2. Get ready and some coffee because we're going on air with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports as done every time. Going to the reports on the left. In the favorites, we're going to be right-clicking on the balance sheet to open link in a new tab. Same with the profit and loss. Same with the trustee trial balance. Going up to those three tabs just opened. Closing up the hamburger for the balance sheet and changing the ranging. 010124 tab, 02924 tab. Dropping down for the month. Running it to see the side-by-side -side tab and to the right. Hamburger closing. Change the range. 010124 tab, 022924 tab. Dropping down to the months. Running it. Tabbing to the right. Repeating the process. Hamburger close. Range change, 010124 tab, 022924 tab, and month by month breakout running it. Let's go back to the balance sheet, remembering that last time we have been working on the second month of the bank reconciliation, a month that will be representative of future bank. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our cpa six pack shirts a must-have for any pool or beach time mixing money with muscle always sure to attract attention yeah even if you're not a cpa you need this shirt so you can like pull in that iconic cpa six pack stomach muscle vibe man you know that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com reconciliations because it should be pretty streamlined after we get past that first bank wreck which has the issue with the beginning balance oftentimes. Let's go to the first tab and see where we're at. We're going to go to the transactions down below. We're in the reconcile tab. And I'm going to open up the prior bank reconciliation by going to the summary and then open up the, the prior. Let's go actually to the history by account. And then I want to review or view the report. I'd like to open it in a new tab. So I'm going to go to the tab up top, right click on it and duplicate it. So then I can open it in a separate tab, close in the hamburger, view the report. So this was the last bank reconciliation for the end of January, the first month. Let's go back to the tab to the left and finish up the second month reconcile tab. And we're going to resume the reconciliation resuming the reconciliation so let's see where we ended up this was our information we put in the beginning balance we didn't put it in it rolled in from the prior period and then we put in the ending balance from our bank statement as of the cutoff date the end of february 229 due to the fact that it's a leap year and then we're going to go uh, over here and say that this is going to be our uh, statement balance, which we typed in, which we would like to be exactly matching the cleared balance, which we can see we're off by the two cents, the two pennies. This down below represents what the cleared balance is. It's the beginning balance. And when I say beginning balance, I don't mean the balance from last month. Because if I look at the balance on last month on our financial statements, it was 88, 645, 27. 
That's not the number here. We're looking at the cleared balance from last month. The things that we checked off that have cleared. The ones that haven't cleared are not in the cleared balance. So if I look at my bank rec for last time, then the cleared balance is the 61,241.85. That's the 61,241.85. Then we have the payments. So that also matches here, 61,241.85. And the, the payments, 11,633. And uh, the additions, 51,981. So 11,632.89 or 98 and 51. 981.20. Now we're off by two pennies. We're off by two pennies. I'm going to close up this uh, arrow. I would like to know exactly what we're off by generally before I reconcile because note that if I was exactly on, this would be a green button as we saw at the end of the first bank reconciliation and we would have the green light to go. But even at two pennies off, QuickBooks is saying, no, you shouldn't be reconciling at this point. You might say, well, two pennies, I don't care about two pennies. It doesn't matter if I'm within two pennies, then I'm good enough. My cash is fine. However, the point of this process isn't just to get the cash account to be correct or close to the cash number so that we can be fairly certain that the cash balance is right, but that we can get all the transactions in place. So, the, so if we can get the exact difference, then the idea is that that all the transactions that are that are making up the cash account are legitimate, and that means that all the other side of the transactions with the double entry accounting system are also legitimate, or at least should be entered. They're, they might be going to the wrong account or something. There could still be errors, but at least they 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 should be properly included. And that means the whole income statement basically is being is is part of basically the other side of the transaction. In other words, this two pennies could be a result of like five deposits and 20 checks that happened to net out to two pennies. So in our case, we know exactly what that is, though, because we know we saw that it was the uh, paychecks, which are a result of our of our practice problem because the state taxes kind of threw us off in a rounding, we have a rounding error of two pennies. So I know exactly what the difference is. So I'm gonna say I'm okay with that now. And I also wanna kind of show what will happen if we go ahead and reconcile, even though we're off by the two pennies. Also note that the things that are not checked off here are possibly not a problem because those are things that we know about that the bank doesn't know about. Therefore, when I make the actual report from this, these unchecked off items will be the reconciling items, the outstanding uh, checks and deposits. If I look at this, this first one is kind of concerning because notice that one we wrote in January. It still hasn't cleared all the way through February. So that might mean that there's a, that check is not legitimate or it got lost in the mail or it got entered twice or something like that. That's one of the reasons we do the reconciliations. However, it's a little bit tricky to, to we can't just delete that check now, right? Because we've already reconciled the prior month and we might have finalized the prior month financial statements, which already recorded the supplies expense in the prior month. So we, we talked about in a, in a prior course or section on the voiding of checks and the proper way to void checks. So you want to be careful, like voiding the check if you find that you don't think it's ever going to clear because it got entered twice or it got lost in the mail, right? Th these ones, though, the deposit happened on 227, uh, 228, 228, and so on. All of these look like they're at the end of the month, and we would think they possibly would simply clear in the following month of March, which we can check by going to the bank statement and seeing if they do indeed clear in March. And if they do, then there are legitimate timing differences that will be part of our reconciliation report. All right, so let's do it. Let's hit the drop down, and I'm gonna say uh, finish now. So I'm gonna force it. And it says, hold on, your difference isn't, isn't zero yet. So you aren't ready to, to reconcile yet because your transaction and QuickBooks don't match your statement. So you haven't cleared the level. You're trying to you're trying to cheat. But so so when they match, you'll have a difference of zero. So if you'd like to process, confirm the following below and then click add adjustment. So they're basically we're cheating here to do this. And so you don't typically want to do this, 
but I want to kind of show you what, what happens because pe people often do this and it lowers a lot of the assurance uh, in, in the, in the uh, adjustment system in, in this whole internal control. But let's see what happens. We're going to add the adjustment. And so now it's going to reconcile. You reconcile this account uh, to see a report of this reconciliation. You can click the reconcile report. All right, so we can open up the report. Here's our reconciliation uh, report. And the, so now we have the two reports. This was the January report. And now we have the February uh, report. If we go into the balance sheet, that two cents adjustment, there's, there would be an adjustment in uh, the checking account for the two pennies because it's actually gonna do a journal entry. And the other side, they're gonna dump on over to the income statement. So if I go to the income statement, profit and loss, and I scroll down, you're gonna see then this reconciliation discrepancy. There's the two pennies. So note, if I was doing bookkeeping for some, or if I was doing a tax return or financial statements or something like that, and r remember my general concept would be the biggest internal control to get your financial statements correct, to be more confident about things like your tax return is to use accounting software. Why? Because the accounting software forces you to use a double entry accounting system, even if you don't know what that is. And so that's what the accounting equation is. It gives you a balance sheet, not just an income statement. And then, and then the second biggest internal control is the bank reconciliations. If you're doing both of those things, the assurance, my confidence in the bookkeeping, even if it's not a professional bookkeeper, goes way up. However, if I see this account, reconciliation discrepancies on the income statement, I know that some kind of fudging of the book, some kind of a funny business or some kind of kind of cheating has taken place here. So that even if it's a small difference, two pennies is pretty small, but even if it's a pretty small difference, my assurance in the internal controls provided by the bank reconciliations is going to go way down, right? And so you probably like if you do the tax return, for example, you probably w would want to group that in miscellaneous expenses or something, you know, because it looks kind of bad to say, oh, I have an expense account called reconciliation discrepancy, which is just, if you had like, yeah, there's a $30,000 reconciliation discrepancy expense deduction on the tax return, right? That might not give a lot of confidence from the IRS side of things. They might, uh, they might question that particular category of deduction, just saying. So if we go, to, so that, that's where they put it. Okay, so given that, let's let's see what we have here in the summary. Remember that this first bit is just basically summary, summarizing what is on the the actual statement. So we have the beginning balance, additions, the subtractions, and the ending balance according to the bank. This is the beginning balance, the statement beginning balance, bank statement that is, the checks and payments that have cleared, meaning those are the ones that we checked off because they match what is on the bank statement. These are the deposits and other stuff that has cleared, meaning those are the ones that we checked off. And then we have our adjustment that is in there. Again, that's a key point. We're going, oh, that's kind of ugly right there. But that gives us the statement ending balance. So that recaps what's on the statement. And then we have the unclear transactions. So this bit right here from the statement balance to the register balance is really the reconciliation process, although that two cents is now important. If I was an auditor and you gave me the bank reconciliation, then this number right here would also kind of stand out <laughs> as an important possible number. But usually the bank reconciliation is the statement ending balance, the unclear transactions, and then the register balance. However, that summary isn't enough because I need to know what the unclear transactions are so we can verify that they're you know legitimate. So then down below, we have the checks and payments that cleared. This is stuff that will be on the bank statement. So it's not really giving me exactly what I want. It's just kind of giving us the same information that would be on the bank statement. So we could say, okay, there's all of that stuff. And then we have the deposits and other, and other credits cleared. That's going to be all the deposits on the bank statement that we cleared off. And then what we really want is the unclear checks and payments. So these are all the ones that that um, are still not cleared. So these are the ones that we would want to verify and see if they are legitimate. And so how would we do that? We can look in the following month in March to see if they cleared in March. Now, it's likely that this one doesn't 
because something happened, right? The check got lost in the mail or something, or it was a duplicate check. And so possibly when we start to look at this, if you have a long list of uncleared checks that are from, you know, months ago, then it's, it, you'll still be in balance. You'll still be able to reconcile, but it's likely that those checks are, are no longer legitimate and you can clean things up by removing them. However, you can't delete them. You got to avoid them properly so that, so that basically because this $500 has already been recorded in January as supplies expense. So if you, if you just delete it and say, well, I didn't really pay $500 because the check never cleared. Yeah, that's true. But you can't like undo the January financials if you already made the financials in January. So you have to basically void it in such a way that you're going to keep the amount in January and make the adjustment in the current period. So, so we have a, a, a course or presentation on, on that if you want, if you want to, if you run into that problem, which most people will, if you're doing a full service uh, accounting system. And so then we can check and see if these cleared, if they cleared in March, then they're legitimate timing differences. They're they're and they're adding up to exactly the difference between our books and the bank statement, these are the uncleared deposits. If we pull out a calculator and we do some calculations, we're gonna see that this 8591.02 minus the 2260 is gonna be the 6331. So that 6331 is my difference, uh, is my difference here, the 6331. Okay, so then if I if I look at some of the checks that that did clear, notice that all of these were checks that were written in January, 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 which means these should match what was uncleared in the in the prior month. So this is the January bank reconciliation as of the end of of January, and if I scroll down to the uncleared items, here's the uncleared checks. So we had the 410, the 500 the 130, the 200, the 18, and the 35, those then cleared uh, in February, the 410, the 130, the 200, the 3572, uh, was that over here? 3572 and, you know, the 1856. And one of those didn't clear still and is still outstanding as we saw, which is, the, is, is this 500, right? So this 500 is still outstanding so that's going to be the so that's how the the two things are going to basically match out right there's a timing difference so you got to think when we're looking at the balances are we talking about the cleared balance which will roll forward so if i went to the next time period what's going to happen the cleared balance is going to be rolling forward as our new beginning balance and the next time period and that will be different than the bank balance and then the checks that were that had not yet cleared in the current period, you would think would clear on the bank statement, you know, in the following period. And we're just gonna account for those timing differences. And if we do that exactly, that gives us a huge level of assurance that not only the ending balance in our financial statements over here are correct, but also that all the detail in, in the subledger, the transactions are correct, which means the other side of the transactions are correct, which means it gives us a lot of assurance over the income statement is the general idea. So if I go to this first tab again, uh, just note that oftentimes I would, I would print this out because the, the report, as we discussed at the end of the first uh, reconciliation is not really like other reports. Meaning if you were to go in and void that check, for example, you might throw off the, the the bank reconciliation report so you have to do it properly so it doesn't mess up your bank reconciliation uh, and therefore you might want to have a hard copy that is that you're sure hasn't changed after you voided something right you want to make sure you have a hard copy of the bank reconciliation so that if something gets deleted or changes then you can see what the bank reconciliation was and then see what got deleted or uh, what has changed if I open up the tab over here, you, you'll recall that if I go into my reports and I was to type in uh, reconciliations and I go into reconciliation reports, it's not gonna go into the reports, but then jump over here to the transactions and the reconcile. 
So it just basically put me into this reconcile tab. If I go into the reconcile tab this way, I have the screen that allows me to do the next reconciliation uh, and move forward, noting that the beginning balance is now the ending balance of the prior period, the ending cleared balance on the bank statement, not the ending balance on the balance sheet, right? It's the, the, it's the cleared balance. And then I have my reports up here for summary and the history by account. If I go into the history by account, then I have the, the two bank recs that I have here and I can view the report. And like I say, if you wanted to print the report and then upload the attachment, possibly also uploading the bank statement here so that you have the bank statement that was used to help generate the bank reconciliation that might be useful uh, in the event that you, you have an audit or something or possibly a tax preparation at the end of the year if they're doing some in-depth <laughs> looking into uh, what's going on. It also gives you the auto adjustment here, which is another area that, that really gives an indication of what's happening. So again, if you send this to your accountant and you have these, these numbers in the auto adjustment, that's going to lower the confidence on the accounting side of things. You might hear something from them. They might say, hey, you, you got to stop doing that. That's not that's not right. All right, so let's take a look at the trial balance again. Those are the two bank recs. If I go back to the first tab or the trial balance tab here, nothing new has happened. Uh, or actually there was a two cents adjustment. <laughs> so we're two pennies different than what we had before. So this is where we stand on the trial balance thus far. We got the checking account here. It had a change of two pennies. Everything else should be in essence the same as the last time. And then in the income statement, we all, the other side of that transaction was this reconciling uh, discrepancy, ugly account, ugly account. And you're like, ah, what, what has happened there? But that's where it's at. That's what happens. So, uh, so that is, that's the bank reconciliation month number two.